Welcome back to another episode of the Statues Podcast. I'm your host, Danae. And I'm your co-host, Crystal. Today's episode is a little different. Um, we have a very special guest of mine. I've known her for a very long time. I know her as a dancer. I know her as my acquaintance, my friend. But I think a lot of other people are going to know her for her, her beautiful clay work and a lot of the other stuff that she puts out on social media, Valerie Y. Hi, everyone. My name is Valerie. Um, I'm, I guess most people know me as like a polymer clay artist online. Um, and I used to work as a scientist, but now I guess I can call myself a full-time designer. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for, you know, accepting the offer. Um, you brought it up and I think let's go ahead and start with that. You know, when you and I, we were first talking about this, I know that you were transitioning from business into science. Yeah. And so now to see you go from science into a lot more creative field, what's that like for you? Honestly, it just feels like I'm doing something that I feel most natural at now. Um, when I made the switch from business to science, it felt more like I was studying something that I liked now. Like I definitely preferred studying sciences over what I studied in business. Mm -hmm. um, so academically, I was fulfilled in sciences. But once I got out of school and started like working, I just felt like something was missing. Yeah, like it, it was a great working environment and everything. But like, I just felt like my potential was in creative, like, work. Mm -hmm. So now I just feel more myself, like, every day when I'm doing what I'm doing. So That's awesome, you know, because yeah. seeing you grow your platform, I saw your first post, and I, I kind of saw that grow into something that turned into a living for you. And to me, that's beautiful, you know, as someone that does creative work and has always chased that dream for myself, seeing an acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine, push and chase for that too was inspiring. Crystal and I, we actually talk about it because she has, she has dropped out of school a couple of times because she doesn't, she didn't know what she wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. But no, now I'm, she's going back. Yeah. You know, I kind of went through the same route that you went through, going to business school and then I went into studying for biotech, so doing like lab work too. And then I yeah. went back to business school because the lab work was fun, but it just wasn't, it's just, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you understand too. I know. There, there's a lot you have to know and like kind of memorize. You really have to know your way, like the ins and outs. I went back to business school and then yeah, I hated it <laughs> again. And then I went, uh, took a year off and now I'm actually going back to school for um, interior decorating. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I, I completely get what you mean. And I feel like like you switching back and forth like gives you more clarity too, mm -hmm. right? So I don't really think like some people ask me like when I changed from business to science, they were like, don't you think like the business was like a waste? Like the like what I the year that I spent in business school, like didn't you feel like you waste your time or now that I'm like in like arts, they're like, oh, didn't you? waste your time doing what you did in science but I feel like if you don't try things throughout your life you'll always have that what if right but now you know for sure that business is not for you and yeah. like so yeah I, I feel like you know we all need that clarity in life and took me a little longer to find it than others but that's okay <laughs> right I mean, you're still young, and honestly, I don't feel like a lot of people would feel like we wasted time, but I feel like we learned. A lot. For me personally, I feel like I learned a lot in business school and in science, too. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a learning curve regardless. You know, as, as someone who has kind of sat in the back and watched the both of you guys find find more about yourselves it, it, it was kind of comforting to see because for you I know you because of a company that we used to be a part of mm -hmm. and so seeing you dance was kind of like my wow moment of wow she's really good at this and yeah. then 
scene, you go to business school and then transition from that into science. And then now from science back into the creative industry. It's amazing because it's almost like a full circle. And this time getting to once again talk to you. It's almost like rediscovering an old friend and getting to know every part of her again. And I think that was what was so, for me at least, it was such a beautiful part of our friendship was being able to see you grow and see you become this hardworking, determined woman that, you know, like I look at your, your I, I see your comments and there are some people that are, wow, you inspire me, wow. You know, when you made that change and you announced that change, I saw so many of the comments and a lot of the comments were like, yes, this is a person that is going to change the way people think about, you know, getting older and making this change in their life and, you know, not being scared. For you, when you made that change, I know there was some, you know, there's always going to be a type of fear for us, but what? pushed you past that first of all thank you for saying all that I'm like <laughs> getting emotional like choking up just hearing you speak and like yeah we've been friends for so long and I just remember like seeing you on set the very first time and you were like mm. so professional I was like I knew this guy was gonna like take his craft like to a whole new level like someday um but yeah like I the the fear is like constantly there <laughs> um I think like still on a day-to-day -day, I'm kind of like did I, I I'm not sure if I made the right choice um like I reflect like I have that thought every now and then still now but on a day-to-day -day, I just feel happier um and as I said before I felt feel more myself and that to me is like the most reassuring thing I don't think I'm ever going to get that reassurance from like other people around me I think it's always going to be like in yourself as cheesy as that sounds like you have to reassure yourself that you made the right decision seeing someone like you you know you have you have these followers and your your following on Instagram is pretty big it's grown huge within the time that you've you've had that platform for your uh, clay seeing the seeing all the overwhelming comments what's that like for you does that help push you to do more to to continue to be an advocate for you know pushing past what you're comfortable yeah um yeah my i i feel very lucky because um you know how a lot of people who are on social media with like a following like they sometimes you you get just crappy comments or like yeah. people who are like disrespectful uh, but I've been like very lucky in terms of like I think I've only really seen one or two comments over the years that are like straight up rude mm -hmm. <laughs> but other than that like every everyone's been like very supportive supportive which I'm very grateful for in terms of I guess like how I hope my story can influence other people is like I'm always trying to tell people that like it's never like too old to like switch into something you like because I feel like in social media now everyone is getting younger <laughs> when mm -hmm. they appear on the platform and they're not only younger but they're achieving more or so it seems right yeah. um, but like there are so many of us like who are millennials but we're trying for the same things that maybe we didn't get to when we were younger some yeah. of us had other things that we had to focus on maybe we had like family things that are were like you know I don't know like it's just I think everyone has like different circumstances when they're growing up and so discovering yourself can sometimes be delayed but it like everyone has their own timeline and I just don't want anybody to ever feel just because you're in your thirties, you have to like do the same thing that you don't want to do for the rest of your life. That is such a beautiful message, especially, especially now. And especially coming from a woman, right? You are such um, a strong, independent woman and your who you are in real life pours into your social media. And I think that's why you have such a genuine audience and genuine followers because who you are and who I know you as comes off and 
nothing changes. With social media, you know, so many people put on this persona or put on another act, and it becomes very obvious. But with you, your interaction with your fans, your interaction with, you know, even even students that are working working with your your class, seeing the seeing your Instagram stories and seeing you highlight them. It's genuinely you. And I think that's why when it comes to who you are, who you are on social media and who you are in real life is just one and the same, just a lot more, you know, conservative and held back a little bit just because, you know, privacy reasons. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I try to I try to not be anybody that like I'm not because I think it's just really hard to keep up with another persona to be mm-hmm. quite honest. If I if there's something I'm like uncomfortable with revealing, I just don't reveal it at all. Mm-hmm. Like there's no reason that I have to reveal every aspect of my life just because because really I started my page because I want the focus to be on my work, like not on me. Yeah. Um that's it's why I personally don't try to like appear on camera too much like when it comes to my art as someone that you know sees what you do your work is everything that you are and I think that's why you know for me I I I get so happy seeing your stories and I get so, so happy seeing you succeed because your work is a representation of everything that you believe in and everything that you push for and it's so beautiful now to see all these students of yours do what you do I think it's just the joy of seeing a finishing product and being like wow you know this is farther than what I thought it was ever going to be when looking at you it's it becomes so genuine that you know even Crystal she talks about it so much she talks about how oh every time your your store opens up she's always trying to buy something or she's on it looking at something people got ninja fingers seriously (laughs) i could be like waiting to like for the store to open but it'll sell out so quick because i'm just not fast enough to check out (laughs) no but your work has been like beautiful though i like i enjoy seeing um seeing you do the work i'm i enjoy seeing the end product and i enjoy seeing people enjoy your work too (laughs) that's so sweet um yeah like i i think like there's two aspects that are very enjoyable for me the one is like you know when people say that like my videos gave them a moment of like peace or Mm -hmm. or calmness or like that or the video was like their serotonin for the day or the next hour or so like that that makes me really happy um because when it comes to like actual shop updates and like selling products I can only make so many handmade mm-hmm. products so it's not at least for now I can't I can't really scale it much more than <laughs> I have now um so the videos themselves reach a lot more people and when they tell me that like they really enjoy it and stuff that really means a lot to me and the other aspect is like you know the teaching that you talked about and I'm so happy when students like make their own creation like with their own hands and they tell me that like it's the most fun they've had the entire pandemic that makes me so happy and like part of what Part of being an artist, I think, is like sharing your craft to a certain degree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, it's like helping people discover maybe that you share the same interest or like they can also enjoy the same thing that you do. Like, I think that's a really wonderful thing. I think art is like, you know, art's meant to be shared, whether like it's in the form of like products or like knowledge. So, yeah. And that- Honestly, like when it comes to when it comes to what you do and who you are, who you are has never changed from the day that I've I've met you. When I first uh, because I talk about it with Crystal, how I first saw you through a YouTube video that you had of you dancing to an Usher song. And that's how I found you. (laughs) (laughs) I watch that video now and I'm like, oh my God, you lack so much energy, Val. It's not <laughs> <just> money. <laughs> For me, at least how I saw it, it's almost like the same reaction where it's like, wow, 
this girl, you know, she does this so beautifully, so, so gracefully, so, so powerfully that I really want to work with people like her. And it was because of a YouTube video that, you know, I took a deep dive into finding who it was and reached out. And eventually I did. And it was that moment of, wow, she, well, I'm actually talking to her now. I did it that I can see your students doing the same thing where it's like, wow, you know, I was just watching her content and now here I am. Wow. Actually doing it. I think that's something that that that's your ability that your ability to bring people in and really change their life, change the way they think about certain things. I, I You are such a humble person that I know you would never look at yourself as someone more than just like everyone else. But for someone who has had their life changed because of you, and I know that the many students that you have now, they look at it the same way I do, you are someone that when it comes to when people ask me who is someone that you know that would change the world and i've always said it was you you know because of your influence because <laughs> of your personality because of how bubbly you always were even when you were down you were always bubbly and i think that's what makes people so attracted to you and and, and that's why you have such a, a huge following you know, your following is so genuine. When I was talking about you first, my wife had no idea who you were. And so mm -hmm. I started to show her your work. And she she was saying it to me. Wow, I think I have a female crush. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> my woman crush every day. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's it's that there that when it comes to someone that I think has huge influence in in our society today it's everything that you do and everything that you are that brings such influence a question that i had was through everything that you've gone through how do you define success now yeah that's a big question if i answer like really honestly i just want to live a very peaceful and like calm life i wouldn't even say like happy life because like i've learned that not every day can be perfect and happy mm -hmm. <laughs> but i just want like yeah i just want to live like a comfortable peaceful life i think that would be like success for me i don't need to earn like a whole lot of money i just want to be comfortable um and I want everyone around me to be healthy. That sounds so cliche again, but that's how I like genuinely feel. I used to, I used to think success is maybe that's like a good follow up is like, I, I used to think success, I, I prioritize like prestige a lot when I was mm. younger, actually, yeah. like, and it's, I feel like it's borderline embarrassing for me to admit that, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, pri I prioritize just like doing things that would make like my family proud when they say what I did for a mm -hmm. living or like where I went to for university. Uh, and like, it's still important. It's important to me to a certain degree that like they're proud of me. But at the same time, like, I think it's more important to me that I'm proud of me now <laughs> instead of like get trying to get that validation from them i think that's a common theme for this podcast every time we've asked someone what success was like for them or to define success they've always said at first it was about building a name mm -hmm. at first it was mm -hmm. about you know money at first it was about these things but along their journey and as they continued and went through things in their life they all have the same answer, to be comfortable, to mm -hmm. just live peacefully now. And, you know, to hear you say it too, it's, it's almost comforting because Chris and I, we talk about it so much on this podcast, how, yeah, at first, you know, I was chasing money. I was chasing a name for my family so that whenever people would look at my dad, okay, well, you know, your son is this. Mm -hmm. And it was like, as Asians, I think that becomes toxic. Yeah, you know, and we're not happy because as much like for me, I, I can totally relate to that because 
in like growing up my mom always said that like you're going to have a better life you're going to be much happier if you could achieve xyz and then you know as you're going through high school well for me as going through high school i realized that i was just more sad and depressed and so it it took like a long time to get to the point where like I've come to realize where, you know, like those things don't matter, but it's so there are times where like it's hard not to think about it because like for me personally, I've lived that way for so long Mm -hmm. and it's just like it's really hard, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I think this says for a lot because it's we're all Asian, but we all are different types of Asians. And Mm -hmm. I think that reflects so much on this culture of generations before us having these certain expectations. And now this generation here is the generation that... That breaks the mold. That breaks the mold and tries to Mm -hmm. reteach what we can do Mm -hmm. and what is possible now. But, you know, like, it's it's hard because because we've also have lived that way and are like and our way of thinking has has been like that up until like a certain point but like for me like 90 percent of my life has been like that i've so so trying to like reteach like for myself my mom to like accept that you know this is my life and that you know i might not have the fancy car or the big house and you know have like that like that fancy job but i'm much happier and that should be is what is important that that we are happy and that we're living our best life to to what we think is um i guess like what's good for us yeah um no i was just gonna say like yeah like i agree completely and i think like it's also hard to uh like convince our parents otherwise because like they grew up in a completely like they grew up in completely different circumstances Mm -hmm. and as creatives like I feel like now we have way more opportunities than what creatives had like when they were young right so I think it was like hard it's generally hard for them to see that we like we can thrive as creatives now um so I think there's a there's like compassion and understanding there but I also feel like it's it's certainly difficult to talk to them about it if they're not on board um, and it's sh- hard to shake that part oh, yeah. of you that agreed with them. <clears throat> yeah. When you grew up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, and, you know, like, I, I agree, like, for me, just because, like, I've always seeked the, um, the approval of, mm-hmm. of my parents. And so for me, like, even after my dad passed away, like, I was still seeking for it constantly, like, constantly being like, hey, you know, like, I kind of want to do this like what do you think even if it wasn't what I had for my own personal plans it was more so what is it that is going to make you be proud of me regardless of whatever it is that's going to happen yeah being able to see being able to see you guys have this interaction now because for me straight out of high school you know I had this conversation with my parents where it's kind of just like I'm not good at what I'm I'm not good at what you guys are going to expect. So if you guys are expecting anything, then I'm not going to meet that expectation. And so I told them, you know, all I'm good at is holding this camera. So that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And you know, there was a moment where you know, even now I still feel it the way you do where it's I question every day if I'm going to be able to suffice in my life or to be able to provide. And, you know, every day I have to wake up and reassure myself that I have a house, I have a wife, I have everything that I have. But I think it gets harder as you do it because it it gets scarier the more you walk away from this fine line that our parents have given us of a stable job comes a stable income. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it, it is that definitive line of if you have a stable job you'll always have money you'll always have this this life that you can turn to but for creatives it's almost like once we turn our back the glory that comes with being a creative that's what we're going to leave behind if we walk away from being a creative 
and we'll know for the rest of our life that we'll never be satisfied if we go down another route. Mm-hmm. Yep. As someone who has done this for so long, you know, I've done this for over 10 years now. And to say that is, you know, it makes me sound so old, but... Yeah. <laughs> You're not. That, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm turning 29 now, but I think one of those things that I carry very deeply with me now more than ever in my career are my friendships because my friendships is what makes my job worth having. One thing that I saw on your Instagram a lot was your fans and and your, your students asking who your inspirations were. And I would like to know as well who those inspirations are that got you into doing polymer clay and, you know, down this route that you're going down? So there's like a few people and do do you guys know how I got into polymer clay? No. Okay. Hmm? I I, I don't know. I, I, I remember seeing your first Instagram post and I don't know if it was like that one, but you were doing something for a friend, but you weren't technically selling it, but you were just doing it and you were posting it up for people to see. That's yeah, it. yeah, no, it was actually like even before that. It was like um it it was like twenty I think it was twenty I wanna say twenty fifteen, like Christmas time or like twenty twenty fifteen fall and like I was trying to make a phone case for myself because I saw this like cool YouTube tutorial on how to make your own folk phone case. Um and that tutorial was like a silicone phone case for the base. Oh, so okay. you use silicone to like mold that and then you like add polymer clay things on top of it mm-hmm. to like make it yeah make it a phone case um and then i wanted to make my own maruko phone case which is like a cartoon <laughs> that i really like to watch as a kid because there weren't any like on the market i guess it wasn't like super popular yet or there wasn't as much merchandise because there wasn't as much demand for it so i made my own thing then and Like, ever since I was in grade eight, I've watched crafting tutorials, like, art videos, like, my whole life. So, like, the earliest polymer clay artists that I've watched on YouTube are, like, Kawaii Studios. So, like, Ruth Thompson is her, like, the artist name. Um, I've watched, like, uh, Creative Rachi, who's, like, another, like, polymer clay artist. Um, So, when I saw that, like, phone case tutorial... I made that and then I just, it just turned into a rabbit hole type thing. I started going back to like Creative Rachie and like Ruth's videos. Um, there was also another artist uh, called, gosh, I can't remember her handle right now. Anyways, maybe if you guys have like a link or something, I can put it down there later. Um, but yeah, like I, I was just watching those artists make things and it made me think about all the possibilities that polymer clay has. Uh, And so after a year after I made that phone case was the post that you saw, Crystal, where like (laughs) I made little charms for my friends for Christmas. So um, my dance group, I made them, I made one charm for each of my girl dance group members and they really liked it. And they said, um, they asked if I've ever considered selling on Etsy and I, was afraid of Etsy because it just seemed like a big platform. So I just started (laughs) posting things on Instagram instead. Uh, And I just took orders directly through Instagram, actually, was how I started. Um, And then once I really got involved in the art community, I started discovering more people who, like, inspired me. I can name off the top of my head, like, Birdie Tam, Tina Yu. Tina Yu is a phenomenal sculptor. She uses different a different type of medium, I think. I, I want to say it's like ceramics or like, yeah, don't quote me on that. But she, <laughs> she makes like big, big sculptures. Um, and yeah, and I love watching like Cheyenne Barton. I love watching illustrators too, like people who don't work with polymer clay. I think like it's important when you're an artist to like look at different types of art, not just art in your own like niche. Uh, And I find a common thing that like most artists suggest is just like going out into the world and looking at for inspiration. So it's just inspiration from your everyday life, because that's how you're going to make relatable and like realistic art 
that people can like look at and be like, oh yeah, I've experienced this. Like I can relate to this on a personal level. Hearing you go down this rabbit hole, you know, it starts in 2015 and then you go down this huge rabbit hole. What was kind of just that defining moment where it was like, maybe I could do this? Yeah, not until much later than than when I started. (laughs) Like it started off as a hobby, right? And Mm -hmm. like, I I actually, I'd say I barely posted uh, throughout, like from 26, I started posting, I want I think 2017 January or something. And I didn't start posting consistently until last year. <laughs> like, cause by consistently, I mean like every week or like yeah. every other week uh, because I was still in school at the time and I just didn't have this, I didn't have time in my schedule to make things regularly. Um, and I, it was, so after I graduated from school, like I started working and I had more time to dedicate to my personal art. And I only started seeing the potential of taking it full time when the pandemic hit. And I started being more like diligent with like promoting things regularly, trying out different platforms. So I was on Instagram for like I don't know, three years, four years. And then I listened to a friend, um, her name's Erin. And she's, I think she's like a digital marketing specialist or something for like a big company. And she was just like casually telling me, hey Val, like you should try out TikTok. Like it's like a growing platform and stuff. So I tried that out, I think March or February last year. And yeah, like, like the videos were like well-received on TikTok and it brought some people to my Instagram. And I feel like that really helped with my growth. Um, And it helped with bringing like a consistent sort of part-time income, like for my art. And I think when I started seeing the income come in consistently, that's when I was like, okay, maybe I can actually like do this realistic, like realistically, I might be able to take this full-time type thing. I think it's really hard. um, Like I've heard people try things out before they see the income come in. And I think that's like super, that takes a lot of courage. So I, I didn't have that sort of courage yet. Um, But yeah, but I, I, I waited until I saw that I can like, you know, take care of myself and be independent before I transitioned. When it comes to the creative field, being able to hear stories like this is, very inspiring especially for myself just because i took the other route where i gambled on this and just said okay i'm gonna move and see what i can do Mm -hmm. and so when i did that you know i gambled with my life hoping that something would happen and if nothing was gonna happen i had nothing to lose so i was just gonna keep pushing anyway Mm -hmm. it just so happened that it worked but with you you know seeing you take that safer route but that safer route still being within this area of you, you're still doing it. You're, you're not giving anything up. Mm-hmm. I think it gives people that, that comfort of knowing I can keep doing this without having to give this up, without having to be like others, like myself saying, I'm going to give every, I'm going to give it a shot, you know, sacrifice everything for it and see what happens. Hearing you talk about this is something that I think people nowadays need to hear. You know, you balancing between your your regular work and then your polymer clay and finally seeing something before, you know, you finally said, okay, maybe I could do this. Is there advice that you could give people that are within that middle area of, I've been doing this for a while and I don't know if it's going to work? Like, like if they were pursuing art for a while and they're still a little bit unsure and they're doing something else, like yeah. on the side type thing. Yeah. Um, to be honest, like, I love how you, you told me about like your approach to like, you know, pursuing a creative business, because I feel like all of us need that little bit of push, like to really take that next step. And, 
um, sometimes like that's what it takes. Even when you're like balancing your job on the side, I definitely was not making as much like, not that I was making a lot at my old job, but like it was not nearly the same as like, you know, <laughs> what I was making. Yeah. Um, but I think like what gave me that like push was like, I felt like if I just, if I just dedicated more time to my craft, I can make it work. Like that's, that's what was going through my head. And I was like, if I can like dedicate more time and I can like make this work and give it my all, I feel like the money will come afterwards. And I, and I dedicate like this whole message, like to my uncle who like told me when I was remotely considering transitioning, he was like, don't worry about money right now because I feel like when you do something that you're passionate and interested in, like you will find a way to make money out of it. Like, yeah. and um, so, yeah, I feel like if anybody is like on the fence, I think you think about whether you can afford to, like how long can you afford to explore this route that you want to like go for? if you had no income, like if you had zero income at all, like how long can you last? How long, how much time do you have to explore this like new path? Um, and normally I'd be like, maybe if you have six months of income saved up for like a year or something like that. Um, but that might not be realistic for a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's like very situational, but I always feel like you have to take that step. Like as scary as it seems, sometimes it's that sometimes it's that scariness that makes you push forward and make it work. Like it's like you have no other choice, you have no <laughs> safety net, so you have to make it work. Sometimes people need that. So it's it's good to have perspective cuz mm -hmm. I I talk about my experience a lot and when it comes down to my experience me giving up everything was because after her after her father died I took it upon myself to come and help her. So I picked up my stuff within three days of talking to my parents and being like, okay, I'm going to go and help Crystal. Okay, bye. And then I was like, now I don't have a job. And it was kind of just like, okay, I have to make this work. And then, you know, it's like you said, it was situational where her mom her mom had to leave the country and she left for almost a year so I needed to be able to provide for me her and her sister mm -hmm. and so when that time came it was kind of just like okay I need to make this work because if I don't we're all gonna die <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know I think people and especially people that listen to this podcast they hear so much of it from my perspective that being able to hear from your perspective gives them that comfort of knowing you know you don't have to take it to the extreme there was mm -hmm. a safeguard and following those safeguards there's still a way out mm -hmm. and then this is why you know i've i've talked to crystal about this too was i've always wanted to talk to you just because you've you've always been this kind of person that really thinks things through before you do something. And I, I, I knew that about you because when you were thinking about transitioning from business to science, you know, we, we did have a small conversation and that conversation left a huge impact on me where it was like, she's going to do great. She's going to do fine because, you know, she's not reckless. She thinks things through. And I think people need to have this perspective like yours where they can think things through and not be so impulsive. You know, when it comes to what you love doing, being able to put time in and being okay with not having results immediately, you know, with you, you put so much time in it. You know, it's like you said, you started out in 2015 and it was a slow process before anything happened mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of businesses soared during the pandemic because everyone was inside mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. being able to see what what you could bring to the table in this creative space was something that i think i was extremely proud of because you actually influenced my wife a lot and that's why you know she really took the time to think about what she wanted for her life and now that 
you know, she's decided to go into school again. It was kind of just like, oh, this is a perfect time to have you on the podcast to kind of almost just say, you know, a little thank you for helping, even though, you know, you may not have known how much you've done for people. Gosh, that's crazy <laughs> to hear for me. I'm literally in my home, just like playing with clay. <laughs> and then you're <laughs> saying all these like, sentimental kind things to me <laughs> um yeah I, I crystal i think you're gonna do great in interior design like i just know it already um i don't want to add on to the emotion but you know there there was something that crystal and i we talked about in an episode and it was it was about how my entire life literally flipped I was the person that you knew me as back then was a very conceited person and a very gung ho. I'm going to do it my way. And when I get there, I'm going to make sure that people know who I am. But it was a moment that you shared with me that really changed everything in the way I thought. You know, I've said, and I've said to many people that. I have mentors in my life and I have people that have been in my life that have changed everything in my life. I've, and, and this is why Crystal and I, we, uh, I, she appreciates you because of how much you've done for me without you knowing. I've actually, I don't know if you remember, but it, I think it was after a shoot that we had and I had, I had actually uh, texted you and, and confessed that I liked you. And then it was what you said to me that changed the way I wanted to be. Because I, I had never seen a man be put down so nicely. And, <laughs> and, and I, I said to Crystal, you know, like that was the moment where everything I thought wasn't the way I knew it to be. You know, everyone makes it out to be like, oh, you know, once you do this, you're going to you're going to fuck up relationships, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that I bring to the table now is you're such a genuine person that even when you have responses for people, it makes them think. It makes them really look at themselves and kind of just be like this is a good friend. This is someone that you would never want to lose in your entire life. And she she is such a fangirl of yours every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but I also have, like, major respect for you because it takes a lot of courage to do what you do um, because um, I'm pretty sure, as you know it, too, is that to really take a, like, go down the rabbit hole in the creative field there is no certainty that like things are gonna work out and yeah. maybe we might not make money like because we need to feed ourselves we need to pay our bills and you know make sure that you know like our everyday life is still going and so yeah. I have major respects for you I have a lot of respect for you for taking that chance and just being like you know what? I'm I'm gonna do it Thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, yeah, I, I, I also want to like say that like I feel like nowadays, like especially on TikTok during the pandemic, I noticed a lot of people quitting their jobs and like mm -hmm. doing whatever they want to do, right? And I, I, I love that. But at the same time, I don't want to tell everybody that that's the right thing to do for them. You know, like yeah. Um, I, I think and there's. I always say there's nothing wrong with the nine to five job, you know, like not everyone has to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody like is fit to be an entrepreneur. And mm -hmm. like, you know, like I didn't really feel secure in like doing my personal art, like full time. That's why I got a full time job doing design instead. Right. Like and maybe in the future, I'm going to like try doing my my own art like uh, full time in the future. But sometimes it's like all about timing and whether it's like right for you in the moment like financially and emotionally mentally right so um 
yeah, so I, I, I appreciate that you said, you know, it's, it's, it's like courageous and like stuff, but there's like courage to a certain extent. <laughs> it's like there's <laughs> courage, but like you said, we also need to make sure that we can survive and that we make enough money to like do well for ourselves. And, um, and so that can take like different forms for different people. And I appreciate that you're able to say something like that because I think it's it's like you say, this whole TikTok culture and this whole mm -hmm. just social media culture of, oh, we should quit our job. We should do this. You know, it's exactly like you said. Not everyone is meant for it. Not everyone can do it. Yeah. And stressful being your own boss. Like, oh, it's, it's so <laughs> you stressful. You know. <laughs> you both would know. Like, it's it's like especially when you have employees, right? Like then you have other people to feed and you know, there's other people depending on you. So yeah, it's not for everybody. And sometimes yeah. living paycheck, like living on a paycheck is much easier and like mm -hmm. less stressful. So and I, I think that's something that people need to hear is that it's okay to have a nine to five. I yeah, think this whole 100%. culture of everyone, you know, you shouldn't be working a nine to five, you know, I think it's kind of stupid, you know, mm -hmm. I've said it to Crystal so many times. I think it's stupid that everyone wants to quit because a nine to five is hard. And, and if you were to ask me if I could do a nine to five, I can't, not anymore. It's, it's too difficult for me to, mm -hmm. you know, be able to go in and do stuff that other people are doing. People, you know, I've heard so many people say, oh, you know, I look up to you because of what you've done, but I look up to them because of what they're doing. You know, being able to do manual labor, being able to go into an office and, and work that kind of a job, it's taxing. It's more taxing than my job. And I think that takes a lot of courage. I think that takes a lot of courage to stand for what you believe and, and to know what you need in your life. You know, not, not everyone like you said it's all about timing and i think yeah. some people just when you take that dip it gets very dangerous mm -hmm. and you know thank you so much for saying that because i think so many people need to hear something like that so many people and especially you know especially with such a like a huge following and working in the creative industry, especially the creative industry, people need to hear that. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is meant for this, you know, not everyone is meant to make it out of this creative industry alive, you know. A yeah. lot of people fail. Yeah, a lot of people do. And I, I and like and I think we have to acknowledge that as people who are entering right the industry. because uh, you never want to like set yourself up for it like with an unrealistic expectations um and yeah and like something that i hope we can do as people in like the creative industry is like provide more insight into what it's like working in like working in the industry because i feel like everything's a black box kind of when you're out of it like when, when you're trying to enter i feel like every there's not a whole lot of conversation about how it is to get like enter in the first place like where do you even look for jobs or like how do you you know like set yourself up for success when you're applying for like positions or how do you be successful at being a creative entrepreneur you'd probably have a ton of like good advice <laughs> oh man when it for me you know I've always been a very impulsive person. That, yeah. That's why, for me, it works just because I'm, I'm that kind of a person where if I say I'm going to do it, I say I'm going to do it because now I have a wife to feed. I have a family to make sure that they'll be okay. So I will mm -hmm. always find an answer. But with finding an answer also comes the emotional toll, the mental toll that I take along that journey when I get there. And that's why I, you know... The reason why we set up this, we set up the Statues podcast was so that I could talk to people like you and bring in perspective that our listeners could hear and and see that we're not as impulsive as mine. Yeah, you are more like we're total opposites because you're very impulsive, but for me, like, like for to even um, 
think about going into like um design school and being in the creative field i had to think it really through because i'm a person that needs like security because like i'm thinking about like oh if we have kids one day or you know there's um if we get a house or if you know like we have bills to pay so like for me i'm like i need to know that like what i'm getting into is going to be able to provide for my family but also for myself so i like security but you you thrive the best and you're very um impulsive when you're doing things because you're just like okay you know what? i don't know if it's gonna work but i'm gonna do it so that that's why like <laughs> we, we clash a lot yeah it's like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's why you know like when I started when I you know the company that we have now I need her to work with me just because when it comes to impulsive stuff she knows that okay I'm gonna leave that to you but when it comes to okay we got a client and I need to plan everything out she's the one that sits down and really plans every detail of it down to the bone and it's like okay this is what we're gonna do and you cannot step out of these lines <laughs> I mean no, uh not really i'm just i'm just a type of person where like um we like i need to weigh out all my options and think about like okay if this doesn't work out okay how else are we gonna be able to approach it and um be able to um finish the work that like our client needs and so i always have to weigh things out and i think like that's been like what holds me back in a lot of things just because you know I, I, I'm very um it's like I said I'm a type of person that needs security <laughs> yeah I can it's funny because I can see myself in both of you like <laughs> <laughs> I I I would consider my decision to like switch into design as like kind of impulsive because I decided pretty quick like I the moment I decided it was probably like over like two weeks a month like of like act, like when I job searched and when I actually like made the switch mm-hmm. um even though it was like in the back of my head for like a while <laughs> um but like on a day-to-day I'm always like comparing all the options that I have like <laughs> any decision like what I'm having for breakfast I'm like you know what this is faster to make but this is like healthier like whatever it's like yeah day to day I'm like crystal and I'm like with big life decisions I'm kind of like (laughs) I mean like for me before I'd even decided this because um I talk about it a lot on the podcast was that before I decided to pursue a career in the creative field I wanted to be a baker but um it really it really you know it tore me up because I have wanted it for so long but then like just after going down like this deep I actually stumbled upon this video on YouTube and um she's a Canadian she's in BC her name is Karen Bond and she's an interior designer and so I saw one of her videos and um I kind of like it kind of just clicked it feels weird to say that but when you watch something and then you kind of just feel it and it just falls into place I was so torn up because for so long I had wanted to do like I wanted to be a baker I wanted to just share the joys and the love of like what I make for people Mm -hmm. and then like you remember too I cried about it for so long because I'm like this is so impulsive because for like six years I wanted to do this but then suddenly I like this is like the total opposite of what it is that I was chasing after yeah it's like the moment a moment of clarity that came to you or like a moment of realization yeah Yeah. do you still bake like um occasionally only when um my mother-in-law or uh my family asked for it but besides that I kind of just I don't know I, (laughs) I, I guess there's like some sort of like bad memories that I do have with it like I'm like I'm so past it just because my mom didn't want me to to pursue this because it really is um I, in high school I I did co-op for a bakery and they actually closed down right at the end of my co-op and so my mom saw that my mom's like I don't know if you should do this because oh, no. yeah no I just um, worked at a closing bakery <laughs> no like it's it's so it's so sad because my mom was like why do you want to do this like 
look at her business like it's she closed down and I was just like well you know like I really wanted to do this but it was just like a lot of back and forth between my mom and I Mm -hmm. and so yeah no but to answer your question I sometimes do it um it's just it's just relaxing but I'm 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 a perfectionist so if something doesn't go my way I get kind of like um stressed out Mm -hmm. and I like start breaking down (laughs) I I I I don't know what to do so yeah no I yeah sometimes sometimes I do this is a common thing that I'm learning with like (laughs) creatives I feel like so many creatives are perfectionists like do you notice that yes Mm -hmm. yes he is a major perfectionist like if there's something that doesn't sit well with him he'll scrap it like he'll scrap Mm -hmm. the whole thing and he'll start all over again and like it's I feel like it's kind of it's not a bad thing because we know what we want and the quality that we want to give out it's not about quantity it's really about quality but yeah. at the same time it's like if we have like a deadline and we kind of need to get things done it, 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 <laughs> it's it's kind of um it's like the only negative thing is that if there is a deadline then we kind of it really holds us back <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I did not learn about deadlines until I started working my design job. And let me tell you, <laughs> I was like, things have to be due at a certain, like art has to be due by a certain time. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, yeah, that makes, like, that makes things more stressful, doesn't it? Like when you have to turn things in by a certain time and maybe you're not 100% satisfied with it. And I think that's like a reason why a lot of people like why sometimes I say like if you if you can't handle like making art like remotely stressful for you, maybe it's better to keep it as a hobby just because you like doing something. It doesn't mean you have to make it your career. Right. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah. like, yeah, but I think I think I think y'all are doing great with that. So handling (laughs) all the stress really well. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I mean, some days it doesn't feel like that just because, you know, because like our podcast is very small. And so like we've said it on our podcast before is that um, twice a week is is quite, you know, ballsy, especially when we first started out. And now that we're doing video format because he does everything he edits and he does like the audio. And so for him, now that I think about it twice a week is it's very stressful for you because you are a perfectionist, but you also like have to, you know, there's a deadline Mm -hmm. to make sure everything is up before, um, uh, the days that, you know, the upload goes up. Yeah. And, and I, but I think that's why it it, it is like you say, you know, it's meant for some people and it's not, I enjoy the feeling of pressure for me (laughs) without pressure. I don't feel like I could do something. And it's, it's always been like that with me, where it was like, at the beginning of my career, the only reason I did it was because my parents were like, no. And I was like, okay, yes, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. If my mom said no before, it would be like, okay, fine. I'm just putting that aside. No is no. That's that. <laughs> yeah. I had a question. And I know a lot of people actually have this question is, how did you get a job with a toy design company yeah. <laughs> yeah, you tell me i still don't know man like I, <laughs> yeah my fiance like asks like t- tells me that like how like because and i like they said before it was over like a short period of time like when yeah. i actually decided to apply and when i got the job um but i think like i think picking I think picking which type of design jobs like that I was targeting had a big effect because like I knew where my strengths are and I knew where I could use my experiences. I certainly didn't have any like, I felt like I didn't have any technical knowledge in art to prove, right? Like I, I don't, I didn't go to school. I don't know anything about like composition or like, (laughs) barely anything about lighting and color theory like all the like things that you would learn in school I don't think I was very strong at so the only thing that I felt like I could really use to my advantage was my like sculpting and 
ability to translate something from 2D to 3D. And it was also something that like I enjoyed doing. So I really tried to play that card to my advantage um, and doing a lot of research into what kind of design jobs would be suitable for my skills. That's how I found the whole toy design industry. Um, and yeah, and when I like applied, uh, I think I, I only applied for two like design jobs. And then there was one other job that was more like social media based. It was like social media design. Um, so that was more like graphic design. And I, I, I don't know if I was like too keen on that, not because I didn't like it, but like, I wasn't too confident in how well I would do in it. Uh, but I actually ended up like hearing back from all three and the social media job, I think I heard back because it required a science background. So it was like a mix of science and design, which was, which was me essentially. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that played, I think that was the reason why I heard back from that job. And the other two were both toy design jobs. So I think that was, yeah, I think they looked at my experience and portfolio specifically, like my personal art account. So like Valerie Y Studios and I feel like it was easy for them to see that I was passionate about it because I was doing this as a hobby the whole time. And yeah, and I, and I never really like stopped doing it, <laughs> like even though it wasn't my full-time job. So I think my, I, at least I hope to think that like my passion came through for what I wanted to do and that I was like committed to making that change in my career. Was it intimidating for you? Because you're going into toy design without, you know, the the schooling like other people would. With these people, they they probably go to school and and you know, did this for yeah. you know four years. Was it intimidating for you? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I, I kind of applied with the expectation of not hearing back. I <laughs> I'm kind of pessimistic in that sense where I didn't want to like set myself up for too much. I didn't want to be too disappointed if I didn't hear back. So um, I remember like there were there were quite a few applications when I saw the by the time I saw the job posting. So I was like, ah, oh, this is not gonna like this is not gonna go well. But the company that I applied to, like I've been I've been eyeing them for a while, and I kind of have like this story on how I discovered that company. So I tried to like make my application like I tried to be genuine with my application and I think that helped a lot when you have like a connection with the place that you want to work at Mm -hmm. um it was intimidating for sure but honestly I had nothing to lose it's like no one's gonna (laughs) no one's gonna like come to my house and be like you suck if like you don't get the job right so I felt like I could only I could like yeah it, it could only be regrets if I don't try. I think that's a mindset that I think a lot of people need to have is this, Mm -hmm. you'll just regret if you don't try. Yeah. I think a lot of kids are going through that right now where it's like, am I going to regret if I don't do this? And, And I think that's where, you know, a lot of this whole TikTok stuff and, you know, Instagram stuff comes into play where it's like a lot of these kids are now, oh, I'm young, and if I don't try this, am I going to regret it? I wanted to, I wanted to ask you was, what is something that you would tell the youth that are pursuing their passion, the art field? You know, what is something that you would tell them? Mm, I think you really have to. I think some people will disagree with me on this, but I think. You, in my opinion, like I I think picking something specific that you're good at or like something that you're known for, like a niche is really helpful to when you're establishing yourself in some, like in the creative field. Um, And you can, that can always evolve, right? You can change throughout your career and stuff, but I feel like it's really hard or at least I've noticed on social media, at least when artists don't have a specific, like when you go to their page and they don't see, and you don't see like a pattern of some sort with what they're creating, it's very hard for like you to be known or like for someone to follow you because they, 
they have no idea what you're, they have no idea, like the audience wouldn't know what they're following you for type thing, right? So I feel like um, choosing something that you, a style that you like or something that you like to create and working, honing in on that craft, I think is what I would suggest like to anyone who's entering the field um, or thinking about pursuing something creative. Uh, it's going to take time. Like it's not an overnight thing. I feel like there's people talk about blowing up on social media all the time. Right. But I mean, I didn't really blow up until three years and I don't, I don't think I've blown up really for say, like I just, I've, most of my growth um, is happened last year and I've been, I've, I've had my account for like four years. So yeah, so you never know. I think it's important to be consistent with like, if you're actually, if you're um, focusing on like doing art on social media, it's really important to be consistent with your content, whether that's like visually or like the, pr the product that you're producing, like whether that's consistent and also like the schedule at which you're producing content online has to be yeah. consistent as well, I think. Well, I really wanted to say thank you for joining us today on this podcast. It, you know, we've, we, we've had delays with, with this episode, but being able to have you as a guest on this episode is, is such an honor for the both of us. And, you know, honors I'm, all mine. My <laughs> honors all mine. <laughs> um, is there anything that you'd like to plug before we go ahead and close it off? Um, plug. I've never done a plug before. <laughs> <laughs> How do people usually do this? <laughs> um, well, you can follow her Instagram page. Uh, I think it's at the Valerie yeah. Y Studios. Yes, at Valerie yes. West Studios on all platforms, my friends. There you go. Follow me there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. You guys are awesome. It's so nice chatting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And thank you to all the listeners for this episode. We are so grateful to be coming this far and having guests like this. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is your host and your co-host signing off. Bye-bye.